In this video, I'll be breaking down a bunch of Porter songs through his various eras in an attempt to find the thread that ties it all together and show you the actual practical techniques that he uses. The kind of stuff that you can apply right away and to any genre of music. Through this, we'll get to the bottom of the Ableton wizardry of what makes his music so special. <laughs> Also uses ML! Scared me out. But before I get into the actual video, if you've seen me posting clips, <clears throat> the music kind, on my Instagram, and you start seeing those tunes pop up on Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, TikTok, and more, it's all thanks to longtime friend of the channel and this video sponsor, DistroKid. With DistroKid, I'm able to upload the music I've been working on to all the streaming services. And since you're watching this video right now, so can you. That's right, the little clip you just heard is ready to release. And if you're ready to release your music, use DistroKid to get your songs out into the world. For only $23 a year, you can upload an unlimited amount of songs to those platforms. And unlike record deals that will steal everything you own, through DistroKid you keep 100% of your royalties and more importantly, ownership of your masters. There's also a ton of bonus features included with your subscription to help polish or even promote your music. If that sounds good to you, sign up through DistroKid right now and you can get 7% off your first year using my VIP link down below. Thank you to DistroKid for sponsoring this video. And now, on to Porter Robinson. Though I want to talk about his newest music, it's important to look at a critical point where he began to evolve. I've made it all just using simple sounds, but I want to start off by looking at the chord progression. We'll play it back, we've got... He wrote this in C major, and I'm going to turn on the scale just so it's a lot easier to read. You're not having to worry about all the different semitones that you have to do when writing out chords. But the first thing I want to point out is that a lot of Porter Robinson's music starts on the four chord. So that just means with any key that you're in, if you're set in scale mode here, any major scale, if each note represents a number. So C is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And when I say start on the four, that just means I count one, two, three, four, and I just make a chord off of that. You'll notice a lot of his songs starting on this specific chord degree to get that emotional feeling. The cool thing about Shelter is he adds this top note. So he's just taking the adjacent note here and then octaving it up. And it adds a nice top end to it. In music theory terms, this is called adding the ninth, but once you have your chord written, you can literally just experiment by adding top notes. As long as you're in the scale mode, 90% of the time it'll sound good. And you experiment with different ones to see what type of emotion you can get out of it. And if I was any other YouTube channel, I would write out the chord progression with this <laughs> as the chord progression. So going four, one, five, three, six, two, three, which is, whoa, hang on. That's a lot of stuff to remember. <laughs> it looks complex, but in reality, if I was to just mute these, you're actually looking at a four, five, six, two progression, which is a lot easier to digest those three and one chords that are in between. It's what they call passing chords, transitionary chords. And the significant chord changes are just this movement to this movement to this movement to this movement. So when you're writing your own chord progressions, if you want to spice them up a little, come up with your main four chord progression, then shift them over a few bars. So instead of starting on the one, shift them over a bit and then experiment with different transitionary chords. Sometimes it's good to just start with the bass note and then you can build those up into chords as you build up the progression. And with practice, you get a lot better at it. There's a lot of music theory that can go into which chords you pick, but sometimes you just go off vibes 
pick whatever sounds good. And then the other thing he does, takes the root note of that chord progression and just puts it onto a lower bass sound. And that's as simple as just copying your root notes and putting it onto a bass. A few octaves down. And that gives a full yet cohesive sound to your chord progression. Now moving on to the melody. He follows a very typical melodic structure, something that I've outlined in this video here, call it the multiverse of melodies, but he's essentially doing a starter melody, a slight variation of that melody, repeating that starter melody again, and then doing a complete and different destructive variation of it. It uses triplets as a rhythmic variation. It's just a nice change of pace from having a bunch of notes on the grid by changing even the rhythm of your notes, it emphasizes the difference from this compared to your initial starting melody. And that's a fantastic way to keep the listener interested. Keep that memorable repetition without it getting boring. You can go on and on about these little things he uses, these little tricks, but how does this even relate to his process? Even the demos that I throw away are very much my taste. At all times, I'm trying to make my own favorite thing. It's no secret that his Nurture era was basically him dealing with how to follow up worlds to the point where it literally took him like seven years. So I think to really answer this question, let's look into... Now what's cool about musician is it's both about burning out and trying to be so productive that you can't make anything good. And this song was built off of an older demo that Porter did with Caro Caro Bonito, which sounded like... And there's a great video that breaks down the different sample chops, but I went and did that myself here. You can take a phrase of the song and just by simply chopping off the ends, it almost gives it a different feel just by chopping off the end a little bit. But cool way to do some sampling is to just look for single notes with lots of texture, lots of layer to it, and using whole songs, stuff that's already been written is a great way to do that. And what's cool is he assembles this in a very similar way to how he always writes his melodies, same structure. See how these these sections are the same. This one's got a little bit of differentiation. And then the very last section is taking this little section here and basically just chopping it up a bit more. The other thing he does too is changing the key of the sample almost resets your brain and gives your ears a different context of what you're listening for, especially if you're reusing old tracks. When you're repurposing old songs, be on the lookout for stabby sounding stuff with many different layers too. Let's you forego a lot of sound design and layering because when you play it, it already sounds really full. And stuff like OTT and Saturator can really help glue the original sound together. EQ helps as well to really dial in on each of the sounds. And what really makes this sample arrangement work are the drums because the drums accentuate all of the different chops that he's made. So with these drums, you get a very breakbeat type pattern. <laughs> Which really steps away from stuff like Look at the Sky, which has a much more four to the floor. And he's picking and choosing what you want to pay attention to and writing the drums around what you want the listener to pay attention to can help elevate your song for example here in look at the sky the melody has a lot more moving parts with note jumps and variations the chord changes are a lot more drastic so he's having to compromise by simplifying the drums so that there's something anchoring all of these different changes versus the musician sample chops which in themselves are already very harmonically dense and the the rhythm is pretty simple no big changes 
But since it's a lot simpler, he can have a bit more of a faster drum beat, something a little more syncopated, and that helps accent the overall flow of, of this song. <laughs> This is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the amount of experimentation that Porter did. Another part of his process pops up when he says that despite his success, he continues to push himself, acquiring new skills instead of just coasting and phoning it in. I don't want to lose my spark. I think that also comes up too. I'm like, I've, I feel like if I keep doing the same things over and over, I've seen artists who I love start to phone it in and it's depressing. Which I believe leads to his success and leads to his super timeless sound. Enter. Okay, all I can gather from this is it feels like everything that I just taught you guys seems to have gone out the window. How come Smile just doesn't do any of that? Desperate and out of options, I decided the only solution would be to book a ticket to Very cool thing about this track is the chord progression. He's actually starting on the six. Now this is a cool departure from what he normally does back starting with Worlds and seems to embrace a more indie synth pop MGMT coded song. So it's really interesting that he's utilizing this specific progression more, which is found in pop music. He uses this chord progression a lot more as a representation of his growth as a musician. But still using these transition chords that he learned from Shelter with the lead and the drums. Because they have a lot more movement, he keeps the chord changes a lot simpler, leaving them on the beat aside from this one transitionary passing chord. I was hyper-focused on this album on the idea of like musical tropes and cliches. Like there's certain musical moves um, and I did that and I rinsed that progression on this album. Really? So, yes. Intentionally? Over, yes, on purpose, yeah. And, and then some cool things about the lead. I'm not doing this as a remake of the sound. I'm more looking at the more defining characteristics of it. And a very cool element are these pitch bends. Now, I think they're meant to emulate a guitar bend. Just to add to that synth pop indie rock sound. So very bendy. And it's just sonically very interesting, something you don't really hear, especially in Porter's genre of music. This can be achieved a few ways by just automating the pitch bend element of your MIDI under envelopes and pitch bend. If it's not there, it's just one note. You can add additional bends throughout the melody with any glide or portamento option and setting the synth to mono with the glide on the notes land into each other a lot more and the other interesting thing that he uses to make it sound like himself is this specific interval so in a lot of his melodies you'll hear this semitone up or down this chromatic jump keeps the song from sounding overly cheesy as you can see that most of the notes are at least two tones apart. And that gives a very bright, very major, happy, fun sounding melody. But as soon as you introduce any kind of chromatic movement, it adds a little bit of tension before we get back onto a strong melodic note. It's a similar move that he does with this accidental note here in Knock Yourself Out. And he's doing the semitone movement here. So the end of that melody goes from sounding bubbly to just a little emotion to it. So it's not just pure bubblegum. The 
that semitone interval makes it sound very Porter. And you can especially hear this in... And there it is again. This semitone to these big note jumps. This is the intro of Russian Roulette, but this is the power of a different chord progression underneath a song. It first starts off by echoing what Cheerleader does with its progression, the six, four, one. But it takes this very interesting turn where it goes down to the two something that he would do a lot in Shelter and Worlds, and back up to our four, resolving on our key. This is all written in B flat major, by the way. So in context, you get this very moving chord progression, which starts out very upbeat, but in the second half, and this ending part here has a lot of those semitone intervals again. So my takeaway is, despite the drastic change in sound, he writes music that he feels like writing. Not really trying to copy anything, but just being himself. I always joke about being a vibes-based producer, but Porter has shown that that's completely valid. There's a magical sweet spot you can achieve when you execute the cliches of a genre so well, but find little ways to innovate, finding a balance between fresh and familiar. The way Porter makes music proves that it doesn't have to be this grandiose display of technical or theoretical knowledge. Yes, music can encompass all of that, and it can be appreciated. The key is that it should be a vehicle for your creative expression. That's what's at the heart of all great music. It's a reflection of what you want to say or what you feel, whether in that moment or over a period of time in a way that represents yourself. And that comes from a culmination of many different sources. I am literally telling you to touch grass. Sure, learn to copy whatever is popular and sounds good. And honestly, if your execution is perfect, you're gonna make a ton of money. However, if you make music that excites you, that expresses the unique way that only you see the world, even as you continue to learn as a producer, musician, songwriter, you're gonna make fans for life who will follow you throughout your whole career. Yes, even if you make rhythm. If you made it this far, I just wanna say thank you so much for clicking on this and watching the video. But just to be transparent, these type of tutorial breakdown videos take way longer to make than some of the more recent stuff I've been uploading. Unfortunately, the stuff that's quicker to make tends to not be as popular, meaning my views are down. The thing is, I need to keep consistently uploading to keep my lights on. This means the best way to guarantee that I keep making more videos like this is if people like you keep watching my stuff. If you're not subscribed and you want to keep seeing me, smash that button and ding the bell. It's free and it helps me out way more than you think. If you want to help out even more, you can like the video and leave a comment to help boost it in the algorithm. And speaking of those older videos, go do the same thing to them too. I'll leave a playlist for you. Lastly, if you have the capacity to support the channel financially, consider joining the VIPs on Patreon. Over there, you can get the project file for this video with all the Porter remix, along with a bonus video breakdown of Look at the Sky that I cut out because I didn't want this video to get too long. Big shout out to the VIPs on Patreon right now and to DistroKid for sponsoring this video. Y'all are the reason I can keep doing this.